So this is a secondary school, it's a boarding school and there's around six, seven hundred pupils here. In each class, the classes to me seem really big, there's about 45 pupils in each class which is capped because it's a mission school whereas apparently in government schools in Zambia you can have up to 100 in a class. Um, even so, I find it quite strange because the classes are so big it means the teachers struggle to really get around the class and see what the pupils know. So it kind of feels more like a lecture-based system. They sort of get into that adult form of education that we might have in the UK at a college or at a university at quite an early age. So they start early. They start lessons at 6.30, finish lessons at 1.30. They have a few hours to rest in the afternoon and then they um, have to come back onto the school site in the evening for prep time. Where the kids come across from the um, boarding school where they stay to the classrooms for two and a half hours in the evening to revise or do homework. So this is the primary school and we're all gathered outside for their morning singing. Not all of them are here yet, but a few of them are. Feels like quite a small building, but quite a lot of children do fit in here. About 180 going from preschool up to grade 9. And I think the oldest children here are around 15, 16. It's a nice little school there. This is the grade 8 classroom. If they can, families do choose to send their children to the high school when they reach grade eight though, if they're clever enough and they've passed their exams and they can pay the small school fee, which means that the classes there are much bigger, but also that the primary school ends up with the children who are quite a lot weaker and struggle more with their learning when they're in grade eight and nine. I found the grade system quite strange at first because you have to pass a grade to get into the next grade which means that you've got variable age ranges in each class but I think actually it can help some of them because it means they don't have to progress to more challenging work until they've really mastered the work in the grade they're currently working at. On paper the results at grade 12 seem really really high in the high 90% for every subject. However, to get to grade 12 in the first place, the pupils have to have passed. So I guess that's why it's so high, because some of them have taken years and years and years to get there, and others maybe just haven't got to grade 12 because they're not intelligent enough. Which again is quite interesting, it's very different to how we teach at home, where I have pupils in year 11 who still really, really struggle, and some pupils who are very capable here by the time they get to grade 12. They're roughly of a similar level because they've got there in the first place. So that boy sat with a chicken by the side of the road and I said, are you okay? He said, yeah, I'm just waiting to give this half dead chicken to some people. So goodness knows who the people are who's giving it to. He said, should you be in school? He said, yes. They just don't quite have the systems in place yet to monitor the attendance, check where the kids are. For me, I find that really stressful from a safeguarding point of view. So the high school has more systems in place. So I've adapted our attendance system at home to maybe hopefully suit them. So there's lots of challenges about working here. Um, there's the limited resources. At the primary school, this is the grade 6 classroom, in the morning it resembles more of a classroom, but in the afternoon the grade 4 use the tables and the chairs. One of the really key differences that um, I've struggled to get my head around is that as a government worker in Zambia, you get no choice over where you work. You apply to be a teacher, and then they place you in any setting. So for that reason, families often don't live together, couples don't live together, because as a doctor, a nurse, a teacher, anybody who works for the government, you can be placed anywhere in the country. Now, that means that you've got teachers here who, to be honest, don't want to 
be here. In addition to those challenges of not being able to choose where you work, the pay is really low here for teachers. The majority are paid around £400 a month and they still have to pay tax and everything that we do from that. And obviously many of them have to try and pay for transport to get to their families that live across the country. So all of this can lead to the wellbeing being quite low. They enjoy their jobs, but um, given such restrictions, it can, it can be really challenging for them. Chester. We're very excited, aren't we? Yes. 